I, I, uh, I, I disagree with this assessment that, you know, people view America in a dim light. I just don't agree with that. And I understand it, uh, Gitmo has created controversies. But when it came time for those countries that were criticizing America to take some of those, uh, some of those detainees, they weren't willing to help out. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I just disagree with the assessment, Mike. I remind, I, listen, I, 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 I tell people, yeah, you can try to be popular. In certain quarters in Europe, you can be popular by blaming every Middle Eastern problem on Israel. Or you could be popular by joining the International Criminal Court. Or I guess I could have been popular by accepting Kyoto, which I felt was a flawed treaty and proposed something different and more constructive. In terms of the decisions that I have made to protect the homeland, I wouldn't worry about popularity. What I would worry about is the Constitution of the United States and putting plans in place that makes it easier to find out what the enemy is thinking. Because all these debates will matter not if there's another attack on the homeland. The question won't be, you know, were you critical of this plan or not? The question is, why didn't you do something? Do you remember what it was like right after September the 11th around here? In press conferences and opinion pieces and in stories? That sometimes were news stories and sometimes opinion pieces. People were saying, how come they didn't see it? How come they didn't connect the dots? Rather than accepting the status quo and saying, oh, it's not worth it, or the politics makes it difficult, or, you know, the party may end up being, you know, not doing well in the elections because of the violence in Iraq, I decided to do something about it and sent 30,000 troops in as opposed to withdrawing. Uh, and so... That part of history is certain, and, and the situation did change. Now, the question is, in the long run, will this democracy survive? And that's going to be the challenge for future presidents. Hamas, uh, or for that matter, Al-Qaeda, or other extremist groups, are willing to use violence to prevent uh, free states from emerging. And that's the big challenge. And so the answer is, will this ever happen? I think it will. And I know we have advanced the process. The ur most urgent threat that he'll have to deal with and other presidents after him will have to deal with is uh, an attack on our homeland. You know, I wish I could report that's not the case, but there's still an enemy out there that would like to inflict damage on America. Clearly putting a mission accomplished on an aircraft carrier was a mistake. It sent the wrong message. We were trying to say something differently, but nevertheless it conveyed a different message. There have been disappointments. Abu Ghraib obviously was a huge disappointment during the presidency. Um, uh, you know, not having weapons of mass destruction was a significant disappointment. You know, people said, but the federal response was slow. Don't tell me the federal response was slow when there was 30,000 people pulled off roofs right after the storm passed. Why me? Oh, the burdens, you know, what? Why did the financial collapse have to happen on my watch? It's just pathetic, isn't it? Self-pity. And I, and I don't believe uh, President-elect Obama will be full of self-pity. I told him that if he felt that he needed the $350 billion, I would be willing to ask for it. In other words, if he felt like it needed to happen on my watch. You know, I just, uh, I just can't envision myself you know, the big straw hat and a Hawaiian shirt sitting on some beach. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> particularly since I quit drinking.